So our journey brings us to a place called Findhorn and what a fantastic, fantastic spot. Look behind me, it's, it's a millionaire's holiday destination. In other words, I'm on the beach and there's literally myself and a dozen other people as far as the eye can see, just incredible. But while I was out and about looking for something to photograph, I'm not sure if you can see it on this camera, but just behind me here, there is a huge colony of seals. So straight back to the van, as you can see over my shoulder, I grabbed my one to 400 mil lens, and I mean, you've got to, haven't you really? You've got to, you've just got to. So the art form when it comes to photographing wildlife is to know your limits, know your boundaries, know how close you can get to the animals themselves without disturbing them in their natural habitat. Even though I've got one to 400 mil lens on the camera, I still want to try and get as close as I can to make them large in the frame. Beautiful, beautiful animals. Look, just awesome. such a rare thing to see these beautiful animals on the mainland themselves we've had to walk out quite a distance to capture them so maybe that's why they feel comfortable being where they are but it's really really incredible to see so I'll get my camera on a tripod here grab a couple of shots and then see if I can venture slightly closer These seals are still quite a distance away from me, so I'm still opting for a fast shutter speed, even though I'm on a tripod. I'm opting for 500th of a second. If I was hand holding, it'd be at least a thousand, maybe 2,000th of a second. We've got plenty of light today, so we can. But uh, I'm opting for 500th of a second at F11. Um, I'll opt between F8, maybe F11, and I'm shooting in manual. And the only thing I'm going to do is set my ISO to auto. So if the light changes ever so slightly, it's a bit of a semi-automatic mode. But at least in manual, I get to control the shutter speed, which is super important, and also the depth of field. Remember, even at F8 or F11, it'll offer me a very shallow depth of field when I zoom in at 400 mil zooming in is exactly the same as getting closer and if you want to exaggerate a shallow depth of field then get closer to a subject so I, I always have to bear that in mind it's just fantastic I think we can get a bit closer guys what do you reckon a little a little bit at a time yeah, I think we can definitely get a bit closer Edging closer and closer, but I think this is probably our limit. I'm going to grab a couple of shots from here, then, then to spice things up a bit. If ever there was a tip a photographer could offer budding enthusiasts, is to get down to the animal's eye level. So what I'm going to do now is take the camera off my tripod, a thousandth of a second, I can hand hold it easy enough, and I'm going to lie down on the sand, or right down to the uh, eye level of the animal. Just, this is taking my breath away. It just is, it's gorgeous. Oh. I mentioned earlier about getting down low. The, the difference is phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and my shot of the day so far i think there's about four or five seals all looking at me all paying an interest in what i'm doing and there's two in the background like meerkats that are lifting their head up and looking over and as a frame it just in camera looks fantastic it really really does
but right down low gives the viewer the perspective of the animal itself and it's the best tip I can give you even if you photograph pets you know all too often you'll see people that'll just stand up and point their cameras down at the pets lie down on the floor and take an eye level picture of your pet or better still get down lower than the pet itself and look up because it's a, uh, a perspective that nobody really photographs and honestly the, the, the results can be pretty outstanding and breathtaking really cool there he is just there <laughs> just like a meerkat seriously so my handheld settings shooting in manual shutter speed I'm at two thousandth of a second because pretty much all these images are going to be zoomed in at 400 mil and even though I've got a fairly decent support I want to ensure that I get a crisp image plenty of light so shooting at two thousandth of a second really isn't a problem I'm at f11 again I want to make sure I've got a great enough depth of field to capture not only the eye but the head of the animal in focus as well remember f11 will offer a shallow depth of field once you zoom in at a great distance. But the slow down perspective is the key to these images. The absolute key to these images. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. <laughs> With regards to my focusing, I've got my focus set to one shot. If you're a Canon user or AFS, if you're uh, a user of another brand other than Canon, and that enables me to take a focus on the eye and then reframe to look for different compositions. And that's working a real treat. Um, just playing around with this group of animals and just picking out different compositions. Really nice, really, really nice. And I'm not joking when I say I could actually stay here all day. This is just brilliant, just brilliant. I don't know if I could possibly venture a little bit closer or not. I'm really conscious of the fact I don't want to disturb these animals. And at the moment, they're pretty comfortable with Gaz and I being here. Oh, a bit of movement, a bit of movement. I'm using a single point autofocus as well. So just a single point. That way I can just place that single point right on the animal's eye. Again, before I opt to reframe and then eventually press that trigger button down. <laughs> there you go. This little tiny adventure over and done with and I think it's fair to say if you look in the background, we haven't disturbed any one of them. How awesome is that? Right. Where next? Don't know. Where are we going next? I'm not sure. That way. <laughs> that way. That way. <laughs> <laughs>
my final destination of the day. I'm in a place called Port Nocky. I'm still on the Murrayshire coast. And I've got to tell you, this place is rather awesome. I'll show you around in a second, but the most important reason why I'm here is to visit this iconic rock. sunset I'm gonna hold on and photograph both little rock at sunset between now and then I'm gonna try and grab a couple of shots of the rocks that are to the left and to the right of both fiddle and I must admit they do look fantastic I'm gonna concentrate on this particular shot here on the set of rocks to the left hand side of both fiddle rock as you look out of both fiddle rock assuming that you know exactly where I am if you're not then just go with it <laughs> there's a, a fantastic set of rocks that i'm isolating it's a very busy place and the only way i can really isolate these rocks is to place the sky uh, or place the sky in two thirds of the frame and only one third of the frame with the rocks and the sea now i don't mind doing that because i think that would benefit more than taking an image that would otherwise be very busy but this looks fan fantastic. I've set the camera up with a 10 stop filter on there to take a four minute exposure because not only do I want to flatten that sea, I want to try and streak oh, what little clouds there are in the sky and there aren't very many at all. Yeah, and not only that, but of course there are millions of birds all over these rocks, as you could probably tell by the color of the rocks because I don't think that's a natural white color. But yeah, what a great way to finish the day this is. Like I say, going to grab a few shots here and then culminate in, in a sunset shot down at Bow Fiddle Rock. Although, if you're watching this now, you'll know yourself, if you're local to this area, that Bow Fiddle Rock is a sunrise location, not a sunset location. But the sky is really, really clear. So I'm hoping we might get lucky with a little bit of light. It was not feasible for me to be here for sunrise this morning, but fingers crossed, we might get lucky tonight. I'll be very interested to find out if you can actually hear me with all this racket. I'm in a cave, or I'm in the cave that's right next to Bow Fiddle Rock. Uh, <laughs> sunset is nearing, and I'm super busy taking all sorts of pictures. I'll probably miss sunset at this rate, but I want to grab a quick shot here 
and this is a very very unusual shot without stating the obvious I'm in a very dark environment inside a cave shooting out into a very bright environment so I'm having to expose for the bright environment therefore rendering this area or the cave area that I'm currently stood in dark or silhouetted now I'll be able to pull some of that detail out but what I love about this particular shot is we've got the sea is all the way up right up to my feet where I currently am and over a two minute maybe a four minute exposure I'll get that flattened water leading uh, the viewer all the way out to the rock but as you can see it's not a straightforward cave at all it slopes from the right up to the left hand side so what I'm having to do is take two thirds of the sky again or two thirds of the frame way up into the left hand side with both little rock quite small on the bottom third it might work it might not but certainly in the viewfinder I've captured one or two images and it looks pretty stunning so I'm really hoping that I've landed on my feet here I really am hoping that because this looks terrific but I'm going to have to get a move on otherwise I will miss sunset at the A1 position photographing obviously bow fiddle rock oh what a will what a whirlwind end to the day fantastic I really love this shot so what I've done is I've removed the 10 stop filter from the front of the lens and I've exposed for slightly slightly inside of the cave area at least that way I'll be able to pick out some details should I want to so at least that gives me options I can either leave it as a silhouette so a lovely cave silhouette shooting out at both little rock or I can maybe claw some of that natural detail back from the other shot or the other shots that I've grabbed very interesting very very interesting love love this That's the final destination. Well and truly put to bed, I think. Old Fiddle Rock, what a fantastic, fantastic location. And I'm not joking when I say that you could easily spend a day here. So much more to see, definitely is. Right, uh, that's it. A bit of a mixed bag today, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have and you want to support the channel, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to find your way back, then help the channel grow by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.